author Amy Shannon, and this is Storytelling with Amy Shannon. In some of my st um, storytelling videos, I have um, kind of recited from some of my books to kind of promote them and also give a little insight into the story. Um, this particular video, I'm dedicating it to my mother. Uh, my mother, um, Sue Shannon, died on January 7th, 1997. And she was one of my big inspirations for actually writing and telling stories. So I just kind of wanted to tell a story about my mom. So, um, yeah, my mom died 23 years ago and um, January 7th of 2020 marked that anniversary. Um, it doesn't get easier, but the memories that you have, um, from someone that you've lost, they they become more comforting than um, s sad reminders that the person's not there anymore. My mother um, was a lot stronger than she thought she was, and she didn't always quite believe in herself, and she doubted herself a lot. But one thing I know about my mom is that she absolutely loved children and taking care of them. Um, she was st always stronger than she thought, and she could take a lot. But she was more than just a mom. She was a teacher. She was a friend. And when I say teacher, I mean she would teach people, you know, her children, um, or even people that she would babysit for. She used to teach young mothers how to be a mom, how to take care of their babies. Um, and she would take care of other people's children. Our house was what we called the Kool-Aid house because where other people's, um, you know, parents weren't home or they lived with one parent, not the other, and one was working, um, they could come to our house and it was a safe place because there was somebody there always keeping an eye on them. Um, and my mom was just that kind of person. She was kind and she taught me to be kind and she taught me to not judge people. Um, she never did. I don't think she had a bias bone in her body. And it's not to say that she didn't get mad or yell or some, you know, get in arguments. She was a person. But she had this kind heart. And um, sometimes there were things about her that you just don't know. Like, you know, she, like that story about people having eyes in the back of their head. My mom just always seemed to know when we caused trouble, and it wasn't some trick she got for us to confess or anything. She just always seemed to know if we got into trouble and then we came home. And sometimes she would surprise us. Um, I remember one time I got into a fist fight in, in high school, and instead of going straight home, I went to my friend's house because I was nervous that the school was going to call my mother, which they did. And then my mother called me and told me to come home. And I explained to her the situation that I got into that fist fight because I was sticking up for um, someone who couldn't stand up for themselves. And my mother told me that she was going to grab me to the house, to the backyard, and where I couldn't leave, I could still have friends over. So she kind of half grounded me. And she said it was because I got in trouble with the school, not because I was sticking up for someone. So she listened, you know. And some, some kids can make like, you know, excuses, but my mom just, she just knew stuff. I mean, whether me or my brother or my sisters, she just knew things. Um, she got ill over the years, um, kind of emotionally, um, but she always was there for her children. Um, it was one of those, she was someone that you could really talk to and that I, I, I miss, but I still talk to her, it's probably kind of weird, but I do. Um, and sometimes when you don't know what to believe in, um, and your faith may have been stomped on, um, I find comfort in just feeling my mom's presence, you know. So, if you have a mom, give her a big hug. 
Um, and I know not everybody has a mother. Um, some have good mothers, some have not so great mothers, but hopefully there is somebody in your life that inspired you to take your natural talents and do something with them. My mother inspired me to write and she liked to read what I wrote and she, because she wrote herself, she wrote a never ending story um, in notebooks and she handwritten every piece of the story and then she'd write and write and write and then she'd read to us and then she'd write more and get us all excited for what was going to happen next. Um, my only regret is that I don't have all of her notebooks, but I have some. And I have her diaries and her journals, which helps keep my mom close to me. And I will never forget her. And sometimes I can just still hear her or feel her hug. But it's, you know, it's very hard. It doesn't, I don't want to say it gets easier because it doesn't. There's that piece that you're missing, you know, and sometimes, and it's been 23 years later, that there's something I want to tell, something happens and I want to tell my mom. Um, so my mom was just one of those people, she can make you laugh, she can make you cry, especially if you laugh way too hard. Uh, when my oldest son was, was young and she used to babysit him, um, they would sit and my mom would read him a story and sometimes she would change the words around that would make him laugh. And they'd munch out on broccoli of all things. And, um, and she just, she loved being a mother. She loved being a grandmother. And unfortunately, she missed out on the birth of a lot of her grandchildren. But I know wherever she is, she's around here. So I hope you don't mind me using this time to tell the story about my mom. And I hope you keep listening because I have a lot more stories to tell. And by the looks of it, this is going to be the format I'm going to have to use for, for a while. So thank you, and I hope you tune in to the next storyteller. Bye.